So the basic issue is not if they collect data, but if you can trust them. Welcome to Architecture Corner and today we have Grege Wigstrand as a guest. We will talk about privacy and this is a topic that is more and more actual. Grege, welcome. Thank you Casimir. Nice to be back on Architecture Corner again. Yeah. Are you a good citizen, Grege? I hope so. But you know, in, in China soon they will know. I read in the newspaper yesterday that um, uh, Chinese government is uh, planning a, a big data project where they will uh, take the electronic trail of all the people living in China and rating people uh, on uh, if they are good or not so good people. So everyone will get a, a big database grade. So this is a good introduction to uh, today's topic about the privacy. How is it with the privacy of individual people today? It's both good and bad. Uh, in the European Union we have uh, uh, a very strong legislation protecting the privacy of, of individuals. But there are uh, loopholes and mistakes. Uh, if I search uh, your, for your phone number uh, since a few months back, I will also get information about how people vote in your neighborhood how old they are, what their income is. With a click of a button and a few dollars extra, I can get even more information about you, mm. how much you earn and uh, so forth. Uh, and this was the information I used when I bought a house in the area. Oh, uh, okay. So I used that as a benefit, this information. So you checked your neighbors? Well, I checked what are their surroundings where I will buy a house. Mm because I have not been there before. So, so the, these are, are data that is readily available. It's public, it's a matter of public record. But when you make it that easily available, uh, then it becomes a bit of a privacy challenge. So it's, uh, we have the privacy, but we also have what information that is public. Yeah, so we, we have a lot of information about us that we might think uh, is our private information, but it's not actually, it's uh, actually public information. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, private information, for instance, what I had for dinner or uh, what I had for lunch or um, who I call on the phone, etc. And some people share this and some people don't. Mm. And some of these people is collected and that, that is governed by uh, the authorities that the, uh, exactly so we, so that we have the data um, uh, data retention laws uh, uh, yesterday so a week ago when this is published there was a new law passed in Britain which gives uh, police and other authorities extensive rights to gather data hack computers turn on webcams and so on so uh, yes uh, the electronic trail in both uh, more and less democratic countries is being more and more uh, watched by mm. by the authorities mm. but as I said it's not just the authorities it's also people uh, who are uh, just searching for your phone number they get this information some of the information without even asking for it there is more and more information available about us so what are the threats about the personal integrity and the information that companies and authorities and governments can collect about you? So the basic issue is not will people collect data about you, because we know they do already, right? And uh, sometimes the law requires that the data is collected. So the basic issue is not if they collect data, but if you can trust them. Will they misuse the data? Will they spread the data more than I want it to be spread? Uh, will they, uh, you know, will the police uh, use the data uh, to catch criminals or to extort uh, honest people? And uh, in the past, uh, both uh, have happened. It's about establishing uh, mechanisms and technology that make sure that there can be trust. We had the regulations in Sweden, 
in German, they had their history mm. and they had their regulations that was very privacy enforcement. In UK, less, a lot of camera surveillance and the new law, as you mentioned. In US, it's another take. So there have been very different laws between different countries, but now it's more a global world. Does that have an impact? It does have an impact. So, so uh, uh, data, um, uh, personal data is not allowed to leave the European Union, for instance. Uh, uh, a while ago, it could be done through the Safe Harbor Directive. That was struck down by the European Court uh, quite recently. And uh, suddenly, uh, US companies are seeing that uh, they also need to have better data protection. So, so there was a blog post uh, from Microsoft uh, I think last week, uh, that, that uh, said now the US needs to to have legislation similar to the European Union. Yeah, I read that blog post and it was interesting to see Microsoft taking a stance in this. Well, uh, privacy is a human right. The right to, to, uh, to privacy and, and uh, private family life, etc. is uh, uh, part of the UN Declaration on Human Rights. So. Privacy is, is a fundamental uh, issue. I mean, it's not just because of weather that we wear clothes. Even people in, in, in places where you don't really need clothes wear clothes. So, so privacy is, is, is very much inherent in, in who we are uh, as people. We, we need a private space. I mean, why, why do people have their own homes? Why don't everyone sleep? Uh, in, in, in big uh, halls with thousands of people in them. Uh, they did, a thousand years ago. But did that they? was, yeah, the, the long houses in the Nordic countries. Uh, but there were 10, 15, maybe 20 yeah. people in a house. And, and then it was, you trusted it was a, them. It was a family group that you trusted. Mm -hmm. but, but, so, so there is a fundamental need uh, that people have for, for, for privacy. So it's about how many people can you trust? Do I trust you? Yeah, I trust you because we have known much each other for a time. Mm. But the driver of that car over there, yeah, I who don't, is that? I don't trust Could him. Could be anyone. Yeah, not yet. So yes, so so it, it is about trust. Uh, you work in the IT sector. You design some of these systems. And what is your responsibility? Well, so consumers uh, or you know ordinary people, you and me. Sometimes we want to share information and sometimes we don't, right? So sometimes I put a picture of my lunch on Facebook and sometimes I don't. Some people don't want to buy phones with GPS in them. Some people do. Some people share their, their data, uh, their location through apps and some people don't. And sometimes you want to share and sometimes you don't want to share. Yeah. So, so uh, people have an expectancy that they can project an image of their lives uh, into the world and they don't want no one wants to know the re the real truth right i use tripit mm. to uh, schedule my flights mm -hmm. and some of those i mark private because then I, they are not published on facebook mm -hmm. and on facebook only my friends follow me so that is a way to me to tell the people i know that i share information about here are information you're allowed to know, and here is not the information you're allowed to know. Exactly. People working in the IT industry, we need to make sure that the systems respect the, uh, the right of the ind individual to privacy, but also their right to share information when they want to share information. It's not up to us to decide. Uh, it's up to the people. Uh, when we talk about consumer systems, then of course there are other systems, organizational systems, like payroll systems and so on. That's a different story. But uh, the systems we produce for people need to be... They need to be so secure that they allow people to share what they want and only what they want. If you store health data and that kind of information, it's become even more sensitive. Yeah, so th this is what is called uh, in the legislation sensitive. Uh, personal uh, data or sensitive personal information and that it's the same thing applies we need to no. take the utmost care to ensure that the data um, does not leak that it stays where, where it belongs and that the uh, the, the people concerned 
are uh, controlling the data and not uh, other third parties. It's also the fear that information that could be used for discrimination, gender purposes, race, uh, religion, etc. can be misused. So any information can, can be misused. So on top of protecting the privacy of people, we need to be tolerant. We need to, to uh, realize that people are different and being different uh, is not wrong. You know, if some private detail about my life should happen to leak out, that should not lead to my eternal shame. Uh, that should, in an ideal word, be noted as, okay, uh, yeah, now we know something that maybe you didn't want to know about uh, Gregor. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's still the same person. What will happen in the future with privacy? In an ideal world, we will have uh, the systems where our data is circulating will be secure systems that, that don't leak data unless people want to publish it. In an ideal world, we would have a culture of tolerance that uh, means that even if private details leak, uh, that does not mean that people are, are discriminated against or looked down on. Uh, and in an ideal uh, situation, we have authorities that we trust to not misuse our, the data that, that they need to collect. Because, of course, no one wants the police to be unable to solve crime uh, because we have too much privacy. Thank you very much for uh, talking about this topic, about privacy today. Thank you very much, Casimir. And for you out there, don't forget to share like and subscribe and thank you for viewing this episode of architecture corner and see you next week